All right. I guess I'm guess I'm live now. Um, see who's all in here. So I did send out the link to a couple people if anybody wanted to come up and chat. What's going on, everybody? So far, it looks like we got Talka in there. Talka, soon. I have an email coming back to you. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody heard last week, but I'm going to try to arrange some sort of neat little interview with Talco, Talca and uh, see what he does down there in Chile and ask him about metal detecting down there because I'm sure he does it, deals with a lot of different stuff than we do. Speaking of which, I haven't been brought out my detector much because all of a sudden this weather decided to uh, get crazy rainy. Um, but I did take it out my yard. My kids turned my backyard into probably, uh, looks like the surface of the moon. Um, they just dug holes and I talk, uh, um, they dug holes, but we found probably about six inches down. What's going on, James? Uh, about six inches down, they found a, an old paint thinner can, um, that was open and just spewing paint thinner very slowly into the ground. Um, kind of a weird find, but, uh, we found other, other tools. The guy that used to live here before us, um, he owned a, uh, paint business. So as you can imagine, we found paint can lids a couple inches down all over the yard, um, of some other tools, but my yard looks like an absolute nightmare right now. Anyways. I want to take it out though. Um, Brian, I got to kind of ask you. So now that I'm starting to get into the metal detecting thing, other than going in um, regular public places and whatever, um, what's going on, John? How exactly are you asking permissions? And how do you, um, I don't know, go go about doing your history on, on locations and whatever? Or do, you, or do you just kind of go out blind and, and ask? Is he not hearing? What's going on, Stephen? Thanks for coming, buddy. Oh, hi. Hey, Kelly. Grandma, how are you? Okay. Waiting on Brian's answer, but I guess maybe he's not in here anymore. Um, hey, Ann. How are you? Thanks for coming in. I am solo today. I'm kind of surprised. As soon as we went live last week, Talia came running down. It's never blind. Okay. You want to go to a public place. I try to do the same thing with Magnificent 2, unless it's like literally a, a public, public place, like a bridge. But if I go to, if I want to go to marinas or docks or something, I'll usually get permission. So I guess it'd probably be the same type of thing. If I were to guess. Yeah, I don't mean for it to go all super quiet there. Looks like we lost a few people there right away, but um, anybody got anything going on? Grandma Kelly, we've been following you like crazy. Um, Magna Fishing, if there's a public fishing dock, I go. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to get into kayaking. Same with detecting. Same with, but different. Okay. Sea Talka. Uh, let me see what's going on here. Yeah, we were just going to take it down to the beach. Um, Brian, I have an idea of a spot that I want to hit magnet fishing um, that I want to hit before it starts to get crazy here in the summer. But um, it's a it's neat little fish pier at a beach in Yarmouth. And I can go magnet fishing and maybe even metal detecting in the same day. Um, but I got to get a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't have one of those pinpointer things. And Buddy swears by pointers. I do have, um, I guess the, the, the detector I have has a pinpoint mode. And even though my son seems to be really good at figuring out where that, where that spot is, I have no idea. In fact, CBS airbook. Crazy. <laughs> so you 
do metal detecting research while you're waiting in line at CVS? No, but you know what, actually, Brian, there's a, there's a spot and I want to do a little bit more investigation on it. I don't know if you knew this or anybody else did, but um, back in the day before the canal, the major canal was, was done here on the Cape, there used to be a smaller canal um, in Orleans. And supposedly they call it something like Jeremiah's gutter now or something like that. It's very, very small. Um, but it was used in the 1800s as a, as a canal. So I would think since it's kind of receded quite a bit, there's not much magnet fishing you could do in there. But I think if you walked along those river banks and it being used as a canal, it, it might be a good spot to detect with. Hey, James, how are you? What do you think, Brian? Sound like a good spot? That's a huge, it's probably miles long. There's so much ground you could cover there. What is no chase? Uh... Yeah. Wish I had my fiance with me. She'd make that a lot easier. What do y'all got going on? Anybody got anything new? It's tough mess with some crazy laws, and I know it's even crazy on the Cape. Any pushing clam? That's pretty much it, Grandma. I mean, when they, when Kelly, when, whenever I get asked why I'm even doing it in the first place, I just say it's cleaning up the garbage. I mean, that's really what we end up doing. Almost done, gutters on Monday. Well, there we go. Buddy's coming in here to save me. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with Buddy. Save you? You do a lot better with all this than I do. Oh, what, what happened to my volume here? I lost it. There uh -oh. we go. I, I said save up. you. You do better with all this than I do. Yeah, You right. do great. So you're out there in the shed freezing? freezing? Yeah, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> I got my I got uh, the real buddy Biggs laying on his little doggy bed next to me, and I put his uh, his windbreaker jacket on him, and I'm just gotcha. out here uh, to say hello for a little bit in the cold. Sounds good, man. Um, what was I gonna say? This might be a cool opportunity. I don't know if you were talking about it, but Buddy just hit a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely well. Amazing. Or did it, did it fall back again? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm currently at nine ninety nine. Uh, oh, it's funny when I broke a thousand, I went up to one Oh four. And right. then, you know, then I, when pe people subscribe, but they don't make a comment, they don't hit a like, they don't interact with the channel. It goes away the next day. Falls off, yeah. So I was at 1,004. Then the next day I was 994. Then again, today I was up to a thousand most of the day. I think I'm currently at 999, but I am so grateful to all you people who have uh, watched me and supported me and subscribed, like John P, like Grandma Kelly and Anne, my friend, my muddy mess, like whoever this Cape Cod Magnet Crew person is, my friend yeah. Brian, Talka, Ola, <laughs> all the awesome people in here. Speaking of videos, I got the, um, it, not tomorrow, but a week from Friday is when we went up to Bridgewater that day. Mm -hmm. And I think it came out good. Um, that is such I, a I, beautiful I, place. Sorry. I was trying to figure out how to share it with you beforehand to get your okay on some stuff, but I, I don't know how to share it privately without it, like sending it into the algorithm. I, I, I don't know. I don't, my video has been doing weird stuff lately. Mm -hmm. um, they'll sit there for like four views for like six hours. Right. And then all of a sudden get a bunch. So I, I don't know hey. what's going on. I posted a short today that I was, it was more of a shout out than anything else, but I posted a, a short that I thought would get some views today. It's got like 12 views. It happens. Right. It's just, thank it's you. Just I really appreciate that, Grandma Kelly. Sorry, sorry, Nate. It's all good. No, I'm just saying. It's I feel rude when I talk over you. 
I feel rude when I talk over you, and I also feel rude if I don't say hello to, to the people in chat, even though this is your show. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get it too. I've said hi to everybody, I think, so far. So, um, <laughs> But no, we were just talking about, and, and Brian's chiming in here. I was doing some investigation now that, you know, I got that detector and stuff. Um, and I had read a while back about this place called Jeremiah's Gutter. Um, it runs through like Orleans and East Ham. Back before there were the Cape Cod canals, there was a short canal right that ran right in that area. But now the water's receded quite a bit and it's just like a stream. I was thinking that if you followed that, because it was used as a canal for so long, mm -hmm. there's yeah. probably all sorts of stuff in that ground. Yeah. And you were joking with uh, Brian that he's even doing research when he's at um, the CBS or whatever, or the Cumberland Farms, whatever it was. But it's true. It's like people like Chris, you know, with Kadega, Brian, they always have their finger on the pulse. They're out there knocking on doors. They're out there researching maps. And I get, you know, it's working. Autism Magnificentary. I want to say hey, hello real on, quick. Man. I am definitely weird. And I hope Joseph's doing a lot better. Hey, David. Joseph's I don't know if you know the name, but Mary's son, Joseph, got hit by a car several months ago. He had been in the rehab hospital, I think, for quite some time. I hear he's doing better. I hope that's so. Yeah, she said the, a couple of days ago I asked her about it, and she said he was coming home soon. So, Oh, that's awesome. That's good news, yeah. yeah so, Nate, a, a saludo, I'm going to do my best to let you talk, too. Oh, it's all good, man. <laughs> No, we're good. No, so yeah. I, I was just thinking that that spot would be awesome. Um, I was also talking about, because I'm starting to get, really want to get to using this metal detector, about another yeah. spot here in Yarmouth that has, it's right on the beach, but there's also uh, a pier on the beach too. So you get some magnificent and metal detecting done in the same day. All right. Scroll. I did a live um, the end of last summer where I wanted to catch a fish, find something metal detecting, and find something on my magnet. And I did all that. And really? it was fun. I just found a little junk piece of junk metal detecting. I found right. a chain magnet fishing, cool chain, and I caught a little fish. And it was fun. It was mostly about the conversation, the view, the, the nice day and everything. And But right. I hit that trifecta, and I, I love it. I you talk about the algorithm. Fun. That's the one reason why my, the algorithm doesn't know what to do with me, because I do everything I like and whatever. Right. It has to be fun. Oh, sounds like somebody's coming downstairs. Uh -oh. Yeah, at this point I don't. At this point I don't really care about the algorithm, buddy. I mean, my numbers are what they were when I kind of first started, and I'm fine with it as long as I'm making content that I like and the kids like and everybody else likes. I mean, right, right, right. And if you are interested in in, in, in tools and techniques to to work the algorithm, get your numbers up, and to be more successful, um, people like Grandma Kelly is very knowledgeable about that. Gives a lot of good advice about that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I probably could learn a lot that I'm too lazy to learn. I think it's John P. Maybe, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he can answer me this this question. I see videos where he'll leave his thing on all night long. He'll leave it on for like streaming for eight hours or nine hours or something. And somehow in the morning, I'll look and it'll say that there were 54 views. And I just wonder how much view time he's getting from that. Oh, so you talk about like silent right. lives for view time? What's that? Are you talking about like doing like a silent um, lives to get viewing hours? Yeah, I don't know how he does it, yeah. but I see it in the morning when I'm sitting there having coffee. I'll see like a whole bunch of different things that he's done throughout the night. Oh, and I see. One of them, and one of them is literally in the title, it says for view hours, nighttime recording, you know? Hmm. I really don't know about it. Yeah, I don't do silent lives myself, um, but uh, I like to... I don't know. I like to be doing something if I'm on for people to watch. Right. But I'll tell you, I, I have been extremely um, unproductive lately as far as posting videos, being live, any of that. And I'm working on it. Um, since you did, hey, Bucky. Uh, since you did, hey, Bucky. That sounded weird. So since you are, <laughs> it's like you my little brother or something. Hi, Bucky. Did you have a good day at school today, Bucky? Uh, so... <laughs> So speaking, you did mention that I made it to 1K. Right now I'm below 1K again, but that's okay. I am going to stick. And as right. I've talked to you about privately and other people, um, I'm going to do that party very soon. I still have. I'm not going to schedule it and do all the planning until I feel I'm confidently I'm stuck over 1K. 
Um, when right. that happens, I mean, I got a bunch of stuff already ready to give away. I'm hoping that you and many others in here will come up and say, hi, we'll have a fun time. 100%, absolutely. Where is Carolina tonight? Uh, I don't know where Carolina is tonight. She had an appointment. When you hit Cape Cod, you should be at 2,000 hours. If not, you are behind. If when I hit what? When you hit Cape Cod. When you hit Cape Cod. Maybe, maybe when you hit that 1K? I don't know. I, I, I know I'm, I'm falling behind with watch hours big time, but I got to work on that. Right. I've got my watch hours up a little bit. Oh, oh I should be at 2,000 hours by 500 subs. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, de I'm definitely lacking. I'm definitely lacking. I'm at about 2,600 hours. I'm at about 999 subscribers. I need to do more content. You know, a lot of times the easiest solution, I think, to, to our hours and our subscribers and all that is just content. Keep pumping out yeah. content, you know, which I have and not that, been doing. <laughs> yeah. It happens, though. You know, I, I luckily have just kind of that one week that you and I went out, I got really lucky and I was able to get two days back to back of content. So I was able to take it easy this week and and not stress out about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm still good until next Friday. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Kelly, I'm actually at 25 from 500 and at 1575 for public watch hours. I know I got to get that up a little bit, but it's I yeah. think it's kind of kind of normal for 500 subscribers, almost. You know, I see people go live for hours and hours every single day of the week, and that's how you get your watch hours. I haven't been able to do that lately, but I want to do more. Tomorrow's a nice day. I'm thinking about maybe doing a live walk or something tomorrow, but it's also where it's not going to be raining. I um I gotta I gotta get some work done, you know, spring cleaning. So yeah, that's where we're at too here is spring cleaning, but. I haven't been able to do anything at work even for the mm -hmm. past couple of days just because it's been so windy. You can't even you can't yeah. use a ladder in this wind. Believe me, I've carried an extension ladder in Boston wind in and you're working for the cable company and you gotta get those hooks up on the wire that's you know 30 feet in the air. Yeah, it's it's not a picnic. Hmm. Okay. She never went backwards. That's weird. Never got purged or anything. Well, you know, I I, I I know that I'm struggling at 1,000 because of the amount of content I'm doing, right? It's not that, like, geez, I'm putting out videos every day, and I'm still not growing as I'd like to. It's that I haven't been putting out the shorts, I haven't been going live, and I haven't been producing many videos. So right. if I'm slow right now, it's all to do with my work, right? It's not any other. It's not like the YouTube vampire, and it's not, you know, oh, you know, uh, you know. I don't have right. a good enough channel. Just that I really haven't been doing enough, and I'm going to work on that. There you go. Hey, expression so. said hi in chat, but thanks for coming in. Yeah, good to see everybody in here tonight. You got a nice crowd in here tonight, buddy. Uh, your buddy. Well, I call everybody buddy. My dog's name is Buddy. My name is not Buddy. Out of all the people I know in the world, it, it seems weird to me when people call me Buddy. Does it? That's still weird. I don't know. I'm getting kind of used to it. Now it feels weird when people call me by my real name. Like if I know someone from YouTube and they call me by my actual name, I'm like, right. it's shocking. It's like an ambush. Yeah. I, 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 you, you, you told me it at one point in time, but, 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 I, but I haven't used it because it's just easier to call you buddy. Yeah, I prefer to use buddy on, on um, YouTube. Everyone who I'm friends with who has received mail from me, who have corresponded with me, knows who I am and everything, but... In places where there's random people, where it's very public and open on the internet, I prefer to use Buddy Biggs. You know, I it's like I love family channels. I love it when people are out there with their kids. Um, right. You know, whether it's Johnny's Corner Magnet Fishing or, or whatever the case, I love those kinds of videos. But I'm too afraid to show my kids on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I can't I tell you that, Mary. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a secret squirrel. <laughs> you need the passcode. You'll always want to use your channel name to get trending. Yeah, I try to. Although at times I've thought of. Uh, at this point, we're kind of kind of too deep, but I, I wanted to change it at one point in time, just because. At times, it seems like it's just me out here. No branding. Come on, what is this branding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start using my real name off again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know, totally. 
it's funny. It's funny. And and that's like Nate, when I decided to do YouTube um two winters ago, yeah. I, I didn't know what my intentions were. I never thought I'd get, you know, a few hundred subs or whatever. I I was just kind of like I don't know. I, I'll post a couple of videos and I'll hang out in the community. I didn't expect it to get this far. And when I wanted to post my first video on on YouTube, well, I was like, well, I want to be me publicly because you know, I am actually very shy, believe it or not, a lot of social anxiety. So I named myself after my dog. My dog is Buddy, and Biggs just kind of rolled off the top of my head. Huh. And there you go. Birth of, a, birth of a legend. <laughs> yeah, in your own mind. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Uh, names, so bad with names. You know, I never had one though. I, I get people that always ask me, they're like, do you want to just Nate or Nathan? And the only thing that actually bothers me about my name is when people assume that Nathan is short for Nathaniel. And it's not. My birth certificate says Nathan. So when people say Nathaniel, it drives me crazy. New concept for videos to be working on. Yeah. See, and that's what I like to hear. When someone's goal is to do good content, to mm. give something, right? Right. That people can enjoy. I'm all about it. I've been slacking on my channel lately, but I was so passionate about just giving, right? Giving um, with my content, giving in the community and everything. And um, that's what's so important to me. And I honestly, when I, when I meet people who are just very very selfish, um, t greedy people who take, people who are negative and everything. It just, you know, it just, that's not what I like to see. There are many YouTube channels where their only thought, their only priority is, how can I get to monetization? Yeah. You know, how right. can I take, you know, there are people who will put on silent lives all night long, constantly, and that's pretty much all they do because they want, but they don't care about what they're giving. And I don't think it's necessarily like that being like it's a bad thing, but it's like my concept is give. It's a different right? way of doing things, yeah. Show some beauty, give something, and then hopefully people enjoy it and really like it, you know. And that, well, that's what Expressions is doing with their video. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, this this new one that they're talking about here, I can't wait to see whatever that is. Um, if it's as if it's as artistic as the other one that I saw, it'll be amazing. Bucky's real name is Colonel Harlan Sanders. Is what Colonel Arnold Colonel Sanders. Highland Sanders? That's Bucky's actual real legal name. He makes so, chicken. So here's here's where some of my fast food nerdery comes in. Um, I worked for Wendy's when I was like 19 years old. I think everybody has worked some sort of fast food in their life. Um, but at some point in time, the guy that owned Wendy's, Dave Thomas, put out a book, and it wasn't like required reading, but it was, you know, if you worked there, it was recommended you get to know what that what it was about. Um, at one point in time, KFC uh saved Wendy's. Wendy's was about to go under. And Dave Thomas went to the colonel and was like, Hey, you gotta save me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's my wow. there's my little bit of fast wow. food. Colonel Sanders was like, Carol Sanders was like, Dave Thomas, you come yep. to me, you ask me for this favor, but you don't ask for the respect. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, chicken godfather. Yep. <laughs> but he saved him. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So I see on your title, we got this metal talk, and I know you and I among others really like the magnet fishing and i'm excited for your metal detecting and yes a pinpointer it's like you have to have a pinpointer because i understand that your new machine has a pinpointer function right yeah. and ideally that will show you where the object is on the surface of the ground but finding it in the hole is a whole different story and right. you can't get your coil to your detector inside the hole and you can't yeah, get it throughout the out. plug you gotta have a pinpointer and nate i actually i have one i'm gonna give you it's uh. Uh, inexpensive um, Amazon one. It's full, but it's fully waterproof. It'll get you started. And the next time we get a chance to do an adventure together, I'm just going to give it to you. So it takes nine volts. There you go. Cool. Pre I appreciate that. I know when to hold yeah, no worries. Colonel Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that video that we did, I think came out pretty good. Um, I did like a, a little <laughs> interlude where we're kind of like walking from one area to the other. And I just kind of, uh, because the place was beautiful with all the little waterfalls and things everywhere. So we I had a beautiful interlude. Yeah, I panned the, the camera around. 
think it was yes, <laughs> no you know that is actually not only a beautiful little park but it had rained so much the water was high and the waterfalls are raging i've right. seen that park where all the little rivers in the middle and stuff going through all the features are dry um okay. it was a beautiful day and that park goes back to the colonial times that park was there before this was american soil you know uh so it, it's a really neat place i really want to I, I have that um i'm going to clean that doorknob up because i want to see what's under it um chris chris kind of verified i, I sent him pictures of it it was definitely a doorknob um yeah yeah expressions the outdoors he, he's saying back in the day you didn't have like the modern uh pinpointer it was more like a probe like a, a metal probe an ice pack type of thing really that's kind of yeah. weird you know how long i've been metal detecting nope over a year only a little over a year but over a year i'm, I'm expert no I, I still have a lot to learn myself i just realized that i haven't made a bunch of people in here blue you son of a gun how dare you yeah I'm just not paying. I'm looking happy to see see everybody in here tonight. So many awesome people in here, and like I said, I have been around less, so really happy to uh, see you guys all. So more metal talk, Nate. I um, I think I showed you a picture in a in a in a chat on I, I texted you on Facebook. Um, I bought finally. I bought a, a um an angle grinder today. Oh yeah. I have the cutting wheel installed because right. you know metal what. When you're magnet fishing, you come up with a lot of metal crap. When Absolutely. you just collect the metal, you come up with a lot of stuff. And uh, some of the stuff I can't cut with a Sawzall metal blade, because like the boxes that go around an air conditioner that go in the window and stuff, yeah. it's not a lot of metal, but it's a big, huge thing. So now I got this angle grinder, zip it right down the seams, get everything reduced small. I'm gonna be, uh, that might be much of what I'm doing tomorrow is reducing all my metal so I can get it to the metal blades. There you go. I got to find a metal place. Week by week by week, my, my pile gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I have, actually, my wife and I are going to buy a dumpster probably this coming week. I have so much construction waste in my yard from, from work I do and stuff. I have right. so much construction waste, like wood that can't be used, you know, countertops. I mean, I have so much crap. So the plan is my wife and I are going to rent a dumpster this week. I'm going to get everything I own that's junk out of my yard and I'm going to get my metal all cut up into reasonable pieces and stacked to go to the metal place. There you so, go. So Kelly, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Kelly said, duck, you're throwing wrenches. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then shots fired with mm. wrenches. <laughs> oh, so buddy, I ended up calling the cops back about the, uh, the conquered, uh, guns that I pulled up. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought one of them, the, I thought the rifle might have been like 1800s. I mm -hmm. guess I didn't get a clear shot of it. Um, but they said that it definitely is not 1800s. Okay. It's, it's a single shot shotgun. Yeah, it's a, definitely a single shot shotgun. And they made that style. I didn't say it was in the 1800s, but they made that style then. So I was hoping. Right. When did they say it was from? He didn't say what, what year it was from, but he says because of the style, I can't have it. Mm -hmm. Because it's a single barrel shotgun. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything the before one thing on that sorry anything, okay. before, anything before 1899 I could have kept. Uh, the one thing on that yeah. shotgun that did look more modern than 1800s yeah. was the um the butt plate. There was a lamination, some kind of laminated piece on the on the butt where it curves where it comes into your shoulder. That right. didn't look that old to me. But other than that, that thing was old school style. Yeah. It was. I mean, there was a lot you could see the wood grain was kind of like just peeling off. I mean, yeah. if, if I literally put my fingers on it, I could probably push the wood apart. Oh, wow. 30 inches of snow? Right? Crazy? You know, it's been miserable here for a couple of days. Tomorrow is going to be cold, only like high of about 40, whatever, about 40-ish, I think. Yeah. But it's going to be partly sunny. And I'm going to, I want to go for a walk in the woods live. I might do that. But mostly I got to get some cleaning done around here. Got to roll up my sleeves, get some work done. I have to work, but I only have a couple more days of work, and then um, I'm going to, my, my son turned 16, we talked about it last week, whatever, um, and I bought him a trip down to five days to D.C., and so we go a week from today. Um, and I'm You're going a week from today to D.C., and how many days are you going down there for? 
I'm gonna be there for five days. Wow, that's well, great. Yeah, one you know one one day on each side to travel. So we're actually have right. three full days in DC, but we'll get partial days on the first and fifth. But those are mo mostly for travel. It's gonna take like eight hours to get there. Well, I know um, your um, I know your son loves military history, and I mentioned this to you before. But you're gonna be blown away by the statue of the Marines raising the flag at Iwo Jima. Just the right. the sheer size of it. I didn't expect that. Yeah, record cleaning. Yeah, and you also said something about the Washington Monument. I yeah, I kind of want to stand where Forrest Gump stood. You know what I mean? Oh, the reflecting pool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I'm also I also told them I said yes, this is your birthday present. I said, but listen, I'm here in D.C. and this doesn't happen every day. We're taking magnets out for like two or three hours. And he's like, that's okay. <laughs> I was like, I have to get a video out of this trip, just because. It's DC, you know. You'll, you'll but, find uh, a briefcase, briefcase full of cash and documents. That would be nice. <laughs> we'll have to be very sensitive about it. Um, but no, I just wish I knew people from DC. I've tried to go on YouTube and search to see if there were any magnet fishers in the area, mm -hmm. and I've seen magnet fishers from out of area go to DC and get uh, their videos. Mm -hmm. I just want to hope I can get some tips, you know. Well, you know, Washington, Washington D.C. is a is is a beautiful place, and there's a lot of really amazing uh, monuments and different history, history to see there. But three quarters yeah. of Washington D.C. is a bad neighborhood, and you are gonna want to be careful, plan ahead, scope things out before you like, you know, because there are a lot of rough neighborhoods in D.C. too, not just all the beautiful monuments and everything. Yes. Interesting, but it, it is a wonderful place, and you will definitely find some places to magnet fish. But the upside of that is when you're in a high crime neighborhood area, you find some exciting things in the <laughs> rivers on these bridges off the side of the road, right? Right, live near Detroit. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens with the difference between fishing on the Cape and off Cape. Mm. I, I've been fishing for almost six months down here and never pulled out a weapon. I mean, I pulled out knives, but they're fillet knives from people yeah. that are fishing. fishing right yeah Try um, to code. as soon as i go off cape i mean that very first trip to go hang out with josh and we pulled the gun up oh yeah now uh expressions of the outdoors saying he lives near detroit and um you know detroit's an area where you could do some exciting magnet fishing but michigan in general is a very beautiful place i love uh up there on the upper peninsula and all that i've been all around michigan i love it there yeah, Mary, you're right. I, but hopefully I'll steer clear of those asses. <laughs> yeah. I'll vote for you if you let me magnet fish. Pretty much it. <laughs> just, leave me the, just leave me the hell alone. You know, I try not to get into politics, but mm -hmm. it just, just is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very divisive, and I just don't do it. I'm, right. here, to mag I'm here to magnet fish. Yeah. I'm here to metal detect. No doubt. I'm here to talk to everybody else who's got hobbies that are similar, you know. So when I go live, I do. I ask people, please don't um, talk about politics or anything hateful. Um, please, no bigotry or anything like that. And let's just have a fun time together, you know. Oh yeah. No, exactly. I mean, we can all talk about politics later, but this is a break yeah. from all that. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. is a break because <laughs> I hear it at oh, work. Metal. Everywhere, hey, yeah, you well, know, I haven't gone magnet fishing since the day I was with you yet again. Um, really? and I can't wait to go again. I need a, I need a 360. I need like an Artemis. I need a 360 like this big. That 950 clamp I have is nice and everything, but it's a little bit weak. It is a pleasure to throw it. But right. yeah, I noticed that r real quickly when I w was began magnet fishing. We started with 575 magnets, and we thought those were great. We're like, oh my god, we're actually catching stuff now. And then someone said, no, you got to go up. And we went right up to the Helios. Um, and that that changed it. I won't go back from that one, yeah. except for the That's Athena. Good. I do like the Athena for like throwing it in the river bent, the clamp like I'll, you have, but it's a heavier one. I'll tell you, I haven't used it myself, but I've seen plenty of videos, seen plenty of you guys. And that Helios is a lot of magnet for its size, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. David Wild. Just whoever got close to Indiana. I don't get close to Indiana. Expressions of the outdoors. That's awesome. My YouTube channel is about enjoying the outdoors, hanging out with my buddies, 
um, for, for yeah. right. hanging out with my buddies in pocket politics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, everybody has their own style. Everybody has their own thing that they like to do. On my channel, I like to everybody feel welcome. I don't want anybody to feel like attacked or like have yeah. like argue. I, I don't like negativity um, of any kind, and I just you know I like it. I like to try to keep it nice and fun. Hundred percent, dude. All the time. I try to be peachy, but I got a dirty mouth and a dirty sense of humor sometimes. I'm really good at. It. I'm yeah, really good too. at not swearing on YouTube. <laughs> so I want to bring an interesting tie-in since we're talking about Detroit, right? Yeah. And we're talking about metal. Um, I, I have oh. shared that I was was in a band at one point in time. We toured one time, and one of our spots was going through Detroit. We ended up playing downtown Detroit, but. The, the cool Rock part City, about this, the cool part about this story. Oh, hey Kevin, thanks for stopping in, buddy. Hey Kevin. Um, was so when, when I was a young kid and I started getting into metal. Ozzy was the first th person I heard. You know, it's, I, I think mm -hmm. that's most stories for anybody Gen Xer that's into rock music. You've heard Ozzy oh, hey. first. You know. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so when I was a kid and I was so into him, I was like, one day I want to be just like him. You know. And I never thought I'd have the opportunity, but I was like, you know what? This is kind of cool. I'm in a death metal band and I get to tour. Well, we go to the stage of the IROC. That's what the place it was in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And there was a picture, there was a picture on the wall of Ozzy playing with Black Sabbath when they were just getting their start. On the stage, I was about, on the stage I was about to stand on. That is so awesome. So, so I kind of looked at myself and I was like, hey, I achieved it. I was just yeah, like right. Ozzy, because he stood on this stage. You know, I don't have Ozzy's money, but I got right, to rock right, like right. Ozzy did. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, you know, to stand on the same stage where a legend like that got, you got, you know, part of that start. That's just, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. I don't think I could. It's funny that I can even do YouTube or I can even be on this panel right now because I'm absolutely crippled, like, with anxiety and, and social anxiety sometimes to the point that I can't even, like, look at people in the face. And it's like, um, I could never do that. I could never go up on a stage and sing. I, I don't know how people could do that. Not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I have yeah. crippling, crippling anxiety. You know, with, yeah, with yeah, my yeah. job is very public. It's it's a very strange place for me to be, you know, not only just here, but at work. Yeah. Yeah, Bucky, it was incredible. Um, hopefully we're going to do, um, we're going to do a, a show again soon and put the band to bed. Finally, it never got officially put to bed, but um, yeah, Kevin, you'll have to send that one to me too, buddy. I'd, I'd like to see that. Awesome. Yeah, Kevin works at a place, um, sees a lot of people and helps a lot of people in the news. He, he's all, on the news all the time. That's awesome, Kevin. I, um, I'm going to have to go, when I leave panel, I'm going to have to go into chat and make sure I have Kevin's channel. I can see what that's all about. And that's a good idea. Um, Kevin doesn't have a wrench, by the way. Um, and that's yeah. a good idea. You know, if, um, if you see anyone in this chat, sounds interesting, somebody you might like to meet. Just touch that channel name, go to that channel, check it out, see if you'd like to, you know, subscribe, watch the videos and everything. And if you are subscribing to people, make sure you leave a comment, hit that thumbs up, because otherwise, you know, the next day it's gone. It's like, yeah, yeah. I got 10 subscribers today, and the next day, nine of them are gone, so it does happen. So if you can check somebody out, make sure you interact with the channel a little bit. Yeah, that's why I put that video out, buddy. I mean, because I was seeing that happen all the time. You know, yeah, we'd, yeah. we'd go into a live, and I definitely appreciate the fact that people come in, come in and like the page. Don't get me wrong, right? But, but if they just go in and click and then run, yeah, you, you wake up in the next morning and they're gone, and, that, yeah, yeah. and they'll even say the same thing. They're like, "I could have sworn I subscribed." Yeah. I'm like, "You did." Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what? I like to hang out sometimes in fun places. Sometimes I, I get overwhelmed, but I like to hang out in fun places with a lot of people, right? So if you yeah. get 10 subscribers from that place, that's fantastic. But it, it's pointless to like chase subscribers that way because unless they actually do interact with your channel, it doesn't matter if they go over and push subscribe. The next day, they no longer subscribe. Right. You know, so exactly. it's like, but it's it, it can be a good thing too. I think it can be a good thing too. You know, I'm I'm happy if people who are watching my channel subscribe my channel actually enjoy it. Like they're like, okay, wow, I, I'm really enjoying this fishing trip or this walk in the woods or this metal detecting or this magnet fishing. You know. 100%. Not just, you know, give to me, give to me, give to me. I, I want to have something to give, you know? Right. Expression. I'm going to jump Thank off you. something to do. Thanks for popping in. Hey. I really, really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. I got to, like, lean in like this to read my text. <laughs> I, I know. I don't have my glasses on either. 
So Nate, I went into Boston, you know this, a couple of days ago, and to do an update on my laser surgery and my retina, and I thought I was going to have to get some more lasers. And the event, the exams were tough in themselves, but I did not have to get anything, any more laser. Everything's healing well, and see you in a year. Boom. There you go. You had to get dilated, right? Isn't oh, yeah, all okay? that. But more than that, it's such an intensive eye surgery. Like, they literally had to, like, push on my eye and, like, put in intensely bright lights in my eyes not like a normal bright light eye exam it was right. actually very uh the, the, the first when i first realized i had that emergency with my retina and i went to the cornea the retina specialist um she goes okay um we're gonna do some tests that you've never had before and it's not gonna be nice and i was like oh <laughs> so i had to do a few more of that but I, I, i'm all set now hey good night mary that's good to hear yeah, thanks, Mary. Thanks for coming in. When a doctor tells you they're going to do tests and it's not going to be nice, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> how, um, how, what you call it, um, how long did it take your eyes to go down when they dilate them? It took a few hours, but my wife drove me. We had to go to Boston, so my wife took the day. She drove me into right. Boston. I had my stuff done. I was home by 1 or 2 in the afternoon. By the evening, I could I could see well again and everything, you know, so. There you go. Now, what exactly happens? Why do they do that? Does it does it let more light in or something? Yeah, yeah. The wider your pupils are, the more light gets into your eye, so right. they can actually look into your eye. And you know, it's like look at one of those friggin' toy kaleidoscopes. You know, they can really look right into it and see everything inside of it. You know, we just see the surface of our eyes, but when they get that bright light, the scopes in there, they can see all in it and everything. It must be kind of cool. Obviously, I've never seen it. You know. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a good point, too. You know, I'm going to be cutting up that metal. I got my angle grinder. Got to have good safety goggles. You know, we do, we talk about metal, metal tech and magnet fishing. But if you're going to scrap metal, you got to cut it apart and do any of that. You got to wear them safety goggles. Yeah. George Robinson. Howdy, George. How are you? What's going on? I believe that's real deal. Real deal. Yep. And then real deal coming in right behind. Oh, look at that. We like that. Appreciate you, Shannon. Hopefully, Appreciate you, George. Hopefully that's two thumbs up. Take a second to hit the thumbs up for Nate. It doesn't cost a cent, and it helps out the channel big time. Yeah, absolutely it does. Appreciate it. Um, George and Real Deal, they've been doing something pretty cool over the past few weeks. All their lives oh, yeah? are, are usually like mid-afternoon on Saturday, and they're kind of like bridging the gap um, with American Magnet Fishing in the U.K. They have a lot yes, of U.K. Yes. people on there. Yes, Um yes. And I think it's really cool that they're doing that, you know? That's when I, when I would do lives, especially when I would do giveaways for milestones. I always try to do them earlier in the day because a lot of people who have supported me and helped me have, are in the UK. Right. So I want to do things at a time when, when people here and people there can, can enjoy it, you know, um, and right. get a chance to watch. Like my friend Brun Free in Australia, she's 13 hours ahead of me. I try to keep that in mind sometimes, too putting up some content at a time she can come in. Anybody does have brunch freeze channel. She's awesome. She's a metal detectorist in uh, Australia. She actually posted a 10 minute um, a video today. You'll have to send me the link to that. I will. No, but there's a guy I'm trying to get on. I mean, uh, I'm sure everybody knows him, Steve, um, the hooligan guy. I've been oh, trying yeah. to get him, been trying to get him to come on here. Um, now that we're doing the lives on Thursdays, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll do it, but they're four or five hours ahead of us. So 7.30, they're already looking at 11.30 at least. Mm -hmm. And I know George, you, George, you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the report, uh, the, the um, support. Sorry, Sonny. Yeah, there he goes. 12.30 p.m. Saturdays. That's when they do it every every Saturday. Like I said, they're yeah. bridging, yeah. The gap, bridging the gap. Um, they had one of the peakies on this week. Nice. And that was pretty cool. Those guys are actually changing some stuff up lately. I guess they're changing their name to... Um, they're going to do less um, quantity and more quality, you know, and be so more PG like. So, PG Dipper is changing the name of the channel. G not not changing with the PG Dipper part, but just the little words underneath. So it's not like PG oh, Dipper magnet, okay. magnet okay. fishing. It's like history history hunters or something they're calling themselves okay. now. Okay. Because that's what they've okay. been finding lately. Things I could do to help my channel: do something every certain day of the week or certain time of day. And kind of stick to one thing. I can't. I'm not gonna. <laughs> right. yeah. 
I can't do it either. Uh, I, you know, I accept I accept my limitations, whatever they might be. And one of my limitations is uh, I, I'm a bit busy person at home, and I'm a scatterbrain, and I cannot commit to like a certain time of every day or a certain um, day of every week and everything like that. So I just do my best whenever I'm doing something I love and I want to share it. I, if if I'm not going to be right on top of a friend doing something going on or something like that, I I, I do it. You know, right? No, I hear that. William Nixon from Leeds Magneteers this week on Real Deal Live. Nice. Yep. Another another UK connection. Yep. Those guys are cool. So though. now I mean, the UK is now the UK is five hours ahead of us ahead of us again. They for a while, they for about a month, they almost a month they were only four hours ahead because we change our clocks at a different time than they do. But now we're back to the uh, for the rest of the year until the next clock time that they're uh, five hours ahead. So that's a good drama. Looks like we got somebody else sneaking in here real quick, buddy. Oh, good. Wait for him to sit down before I send him up here. Oh, good, because I, I can't handle the pressure of the superstar. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's going on, Josh? Oh, boy. It's Bazooka Boy. How are we doing? Awesome, Josh. How are you doing? Uh, doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Awesome. Now that we can talk about the... Uh, the bazooka. <laughs> oh, this thing? Yeah. Josh, that 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 recreation that you made there is absolutely fantastic looking. That's you did a, an amazing job on that. You got some <laughs> skills. Is, uh, oh my god. Magnet fishing, metal detecting, arts and crafts. He's a triple threat. Yeah, yeah. I got too many hobbies. That's what it's gonna say that on my tombstone. Too many hobbies. <laughs> Yeah, and he does rescue missions for me all the time. Every <laughs> time we hang out, he's doing some sort really? of rescue mission. Yep. This is a Josh, beast. This jack, is of a all jack of all trades, Josh. <laughs> My cat oh. just locked me out. Just I, I just saw your cat walk in front of the screen. I, I assume it was a cat and not like a tiger that's stalking you. It is, Ann, isn't it? Oh, my God. It is. Is he frozen? Uh, his, his, his photo is frozen. I don't I'm know gonna, if his audio I'm is. I'm going to take him off there so that way he doesn't. There you go. That's oh, an excellent like that dancing with his shirt off because he thinks there he's frozen. There, <laughs> there he is. Cats, man. Yeah, I hear you. Mine, com mine comes down here too, but she would have to jump on this little table. You guys don't want to see what the other side of the laptop looks like. <laughs> this is my clean spot. Oh yeah, believe me, I know. No. My my room in my house, in my office, where I sometimes do my lives, there is so much rusty metal objects from metal detecting, and my all, so much stuff in that room. Plus, it's my wife's office. I try to keep my corner out of her way, but oh my god, it's so bad in there. I might try to do what you're doing, buddy. Um, do you have like power out there in your shed? I have an extension cord running. I have an outlet on the side of the house, and the house is only about, I don't know, 40 or 50 feet away, something like that. So I have an extension cord out here, and I got a little, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it all hooked up. I got the power strip, whatnot. <laughs> right. There you go. Okay. That's Live in the Vita right Roca there. in the Love Shack. Come on. What? I got a. Uh, no, I was thinking about running a wire out there, but that's probably the more practical idea is to just use an extension cord. Okay. You have to check your local um um you have to check your local what do they call it code, but typically it's pretty easy to run a permanent line out to somewhere. You just gotta bury some PVC conduit 14 yeah. inches in the ground, run some uh, Romex through it, and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I Luckily, just have an extension cord out to my chickens for their hot water. <laughs> oh, is that what you do? <laughs> this, is, this is my coop. Back. So um, I got – buddy, I don't know if you remember last time we went out to that um, big park and you got the Indian head and stuff. My mm -hmm. uh, detector broke. Do you remember it that? It broke? I thought you ran out of battery. I didn't know. Oh, your arm thing. Yeah, the arm thing. So I 3D printed another 3D print here. Oh, heck so, Yeah. That's one. beautiful. Now, where do you get like the program to know how to tell your printer how to do that? Where do you get the program for that specific item or object? Uh, that I actually just downloaded offline, but I probably could have designed it if I wanted to, but somebody had already done it and I liked it. So it's 
basically you just you find it online and be like, I like that, download, send to printer, and just let it run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah plug your uncle. Bam. But yeah, that's great. Under- this you don't have to enter dimensions or anything. It just prints. What's that? You don't have to enter dimensions. It just prints. I mean, you can you can make it bigger or whatever, but these people have already figured it out. So, right. But awesome. this one, I I completely designed this all myself. So, that's that you did. So I, I'm literally blown away with that. It really looks like the genuine article out of the factory. The yellow really? paint, the way the way the nomenclature is done there. Um, the dimensions are perfect because you got that plan that is just that's amazing you did a good job yeah so like this is what i'm holding in the video you know obviously right, right. it's nice yeah but yeah but that's only because brock stomped on it you know what though i'm glad he did because it could have been a lot different but yeah yeah, it could. <laughs> yeah. but uh that you know good. my wife worked on the uh the font she made a little sticker with her cricket machine and we That's just what I was about to say. Is that from the cricket? That, that is fantastic. Kinda, yeah. Stamped it on there. It looks like a genuine article. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it weighs like nothing. Like it's my my wife has a cricket too, and she tells me she could help me make um different things, but I have, we haven't got around to doing that yet. I'm my wife works some... too hard. My wife works too hard at her career to uh, be doing a lot of stuff for my YouTube channel. Uh, honestly, my work, anyway, my wife works too way too hard and still puts up with all my stupid crap. So, well, you have a better wife than I do. Let's trade. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not getting down with that wife swap thing, Josh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I got some more. I got my printer running right now with some magnet fishing related items that I'm sending to somebody. So. Nice. Those are those are printing right now. We'll see how they turn out. So first time, another complete design of mine. So that's awesome. Did you like do CAD or something in school? Is that how you know what I do these design things? I played a lot of Sims as a kid. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sims City. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, it was the program I use is very basic. It yeah. gives you like basic shapes like a a cylinder a square a stop sign mm-hmm. shape like there's yeah. some things that are built in there already and basically you just go off of that and the there hardest thing is like getting angles and stuff but you know this for the most part this is just a big tube it's just a bunch yep. of tubes right so it really wasn't that hard the hard part was the fins that is so and cool getting the uh the cone shape right so yeah, George, yeah. the trick is getting your wife into the same hobbies. Yeah. You know what? My wife is and I are very, very different people. Um, she doesn't like to get all dirty like I do and do all the fun things I, I do. But she does actually. She's a professional. She works very, very hard. And like when she does have some time to unwind with the kids and the house and everything in this life, when she has some time to unwind, she's listening to Taylor Swift. You know, <laughs> you go, our so wives well. are going to get along great. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> Yeah. Angie, thankfully, very much likes uh, metal detecting, so she will go out with me any time that we can. I've got her magnet fishing a few times, but it's not something she prefers. But she I'm trying will. to get my son to go out with me more and more, because honestly, it, it, it's really a shame. He sits in his room, and he has friends online. It's not like back in the day when you're out in the neighborhood playing with kids. His friends are on his tablet, right? But at the right. same time... It, at the same time, he's in his room on his tablet so much that um, I'm making a double effort to get him out more. I actually took him, my son, my son's turning 11 soon, and we don't do enough of this. I took him on an adventure last week, and we walked a mile through the woods on this old train track to the center of town right. uh, with our fishing rods, and we went fishing, you know? Wow. And at the end of the day, he was like, oh, my God, Daddy, you know, I'm an adventurer. You know, I want to do more things like this. I want to, you know, he wants to do it more. He wants to do that trash cleanup that is yeah. definitely, with this nice weather, we're definitely going to be doing a tra- trash cleanup video soon. Um, I just want to come out of the house. It's healthy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, George, that is awesome that you and Shannon have a hobby that you can love to do together like that. 
my wife my wife and my mutual hobby is trying to keep this house standing and the kids you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. keep the kids breathing <laughs> that's usually a good idea yeah, yeah. kids breathing can i go to bed <laughs> yeah that's for yeah. sure carolina like doesn't mind what i do but she just doesn't want to get dirty she'll yeah, come yeah. down yeah. she'll come down to spots with us and she'll like kind of watch it and hang out yeah, yeah. but but she's not pulling in nasty rusty chunks of metal you know yeah just put her in i, would, I did a live out in my canoe fishing Sorry. i did a live in my canoe fishing last summer and i didn't even know it my wife was on this little bridge taking pictures of me and stuff and it's like she enjoys the outdoors but she doesn't like getting dirty she doesn't like fishing. She doesn't like. She definitely wouldn't like magnet magnet fishing. She doesn't like metal detecting any of that. But she does like the outdoors, you know. Yeah. Middle ground. I love it. New England. I, I'm so excited. It's, it, one of these days, it's going to be spring. Yeah. I haven't been out much. I've been working on my cars, getting my cars, my wife's car up to spec so I can get it ins inspected, mm. and uh, mm. keep it roadworthy. Doing all the brakes, did a bunch of suspension work and stuff. So that's been eating up my time. And there then you go. Dude, brake work is so expensive, but if you have the tools and you've done it, you know how to do it. it it's really not hard to do at all. And no. you save a lot of money. I did both of her front brakes within an hour. And like that was. She will, she will be missed. Um, <laughs> I did both of her front brakes in an hour. She will be missed. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I don't do a ton with the cars. I did a I did a starter a bunch of years ago, but I am not a uh, a handy guy. If it weren't for yeah. YouTube, if it weren't for YouTube, I'd be doing I'd be hire, wasting money hiring people. Right, and, and you're right. And a, and a starter, two bolts. It can be a pain in the neck to get to it, depending on the car, right? But I mean, yep. some of the stuff is so easy. When I had my Ford pick, pickup truck, um, so many repairs that would have cost me hundreds or even into thousands of dollars. I did myself watching YouTube videos. Yeah. The trick is having the tools, though, right? I got tools up the <clears throat> yin yang out here. I've often thought about starting a channel just for repairing cars because it's so yeah. hard to find videos that are specific to my car because I have a yeah. odd car. You know, and I could be like, here's how you replace it on, uh, I don't even know what it is, uh, a Chevy Captiva. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. That's you a know, good idea because somebody who has a Chevy Captiva who wants to fix their own car, how many videos are going to be out there? They're going to find your video. Yeah, but it's I don't do the repairs enough that like I could make a whole you know consistent channel. But I you know uploading when I when I need to do something would be kind of cool. But it's a Maybe whole other aspect. Our friend Wicked Digger, you know? our friend Wicked Digger Chris, not only is an, he a uh, very good battle detectorist, um, has a channel Wicked Repairs where he does all types of repairs. Does he? Yeah. Yeah. I changed my wife's oil. She has a cheap turkey. And in fact, um, I need to get to Walmart and get the oil and the filter and all that because I do that myself. My wife, my wife's car takes synthetic oil. It's a hundred and forty dollars with taxes and everything to get the oil changed over at Valvoline or whatever it is, right? And you get a coupon, it's like twelve dollars off. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I go to Walmart, if it's on sale, I get the oil and the filter for about thirty-five dollars. I do it myself in the driveway. It takes twenty minutes. Boom. Right. Yeah. I actually, I do all this other stuff, but I actually went to Valvoline to get my wife's oil changed the other day because yeah, yeah. I didn't want to, <laughs> she's yelling at her puppy. Uh, didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to deal with the oil change. Last two times I did it, it was an absolute nightmare cool. and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So I was like, cool. I'm just having the you gotta, to do it. You don't want to rush. You got to do it step by step. And you don't want to have an oil spill. That happens if you don't have the right that equipment, was, if you don't have it set up that right. That was two years. Hey, Bart Cubbins. Yeah. Hey, Radical changed the subject. Bart Cubbins is saying he found his first morels of the year today. That's something I've been wanting to learn about for a long time, foraging mushrooms and natural foods. That's cool. That scare, That scares me that I was, was going to say, I'm, I'm way too afraid. I, yeah. I don't really like mushrooms much, but like, the idea of hunting for them seems kind of fun. Yeah. I'll go on a hunt with you, but I, you can keep them all. Yeah. 
that sounds fun the the hunt part but the eat part scares me because i don't know i love mushrooms my wife will touch them i love what mushrooms my wife hates them she's repulsed by them but i don't know i'd be afraid like you're saying i'd pick the wrong mushroom and i'd friggin wind up in a box yeah that's that's my that's my fear (laughs) you know same thing with with berries you know there, there are lots of weird wild berries here in new england you know, and you just don't know which ones are the right ones to pick. Right. Um, I was, it's like burning. You know, we were walking the other day in the woods, and I was talking to Talia about like tea berries. You know, and how you can actually eat them, and they taste like wintergreen. But then I was like, "Hey, wait a minute! I probably shouldn't tell her this because then she might misidentify it. Cause she doesn't know much about that stuff." I'm like, "Just don't eat anything." <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't pick anything. I was, and eat it. I was just gonna say like blueberries. And uh, wintergreen berries are the only ones that I would eat, but then I never eat the wintergreens because I'm not 100% positive on their ID anymore. So, right, I don't know which kind of mint they are, but I can see this wild mint. I, I, I can recognize the leaves, I don't even know what they're called, but you break them, you smell them, they smell very much like mint. They're very minty, they taste good. Yeah, they're like shiny, aren't they? Like they almost look waxy. I think they look dark and waxy. They're very, yeah. uh, like kind of like spoon shaped. All right, yeah, I'll so. take you up on that. I don't even know where Bob Coven, Coven's lives, but I should because I mailed him a prize probably, I think, about like a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, I'm, maybe I am. Is mushroom picking the big thing here in Massachusetts? I don't know. It can be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Never been. I, when it comes to mushrooms, I'd rather be picked. <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> I just embarrassed Nate. You can tell by the telltale body language that he touched his face like this. <laughs> it was an itch, I swear. Uh, buddy, are you going to the club meeting tomorrow, the metal detecting club? Is that tomorrow night? Yeah. First Friday of the month. You know what? Yes. Um, and or but. Uh, yeah, my daughter has dance and everything. I forgot to talk to my wife about that because I cannot remember anything. So, but yeah, I'm going. I can't wait. I'm going to I'm going to bring the rocket because a lot of people have asked yeah. me to, to see it. So nice. Oh, cool. cool, like, cool. Uh, someone, someone coming in here. Uh, Five dollars for a picture vacation. with it. Well, you know, our friend Brian Silver Assassin has some amazing stuff to show off at the meeting this month. I do not. What's going on, Brockton? What up, Brockton? What's up, guys? Hey, you see behind me? This is an awesome spot. I would yeah. love to go there and do some magnificent. He's live three, from the roof of the Prudential three, Tower. Three bridges. One there, nice. one here, and one on this side. over Where here. is that? Well, What's, no. What city is it? Boston. You know, when I first came into the magnet fishing community and they were talking about Beloit and then they were talking about the next year, I'm thinking to myself, I was saying to everybody, you know, Boston would be an amazing place for for an event like that because of what we have right there. I'm telling you. And and not only that, you know, we got Cambridge, we got Lynn, we have, man, we got plenty of places that are like crazy areas. Right. Uh, Chelsea. I mean, come on. Thank you. Yeah, it's and it's Lowell, like there's nothing. How about Lowell? Lowell's you know, crazy. Waterways. Lowell, yeah. I mean, there's even a place, uh, uh, Sean, that was um, my son and I want to go to called Fort Independence. It's kind of close to Southie. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's actually been used as a fort since like before World War One. It was used even during like the Spanish American War. It's it's been there for a long, long time. You gotta be careful. We're not allowed to do magnificent or metal detecting at forts. The, th- the thing is, is there's a walkway right there that goes to the beach. Okay. So I think uh, I'm talking about fishing off the walkway itself, not the actual fort, but it's, no. yeah. Oh. I'd, okay. I'd have to call them, but yeah, everything. Yeah, there's a lot of rules about that. conservation land, about federal property, about all these uh, historical properties. When I metal tech this stuff, I prefer to remain blissful, blissfully ignorant. I'm sure there's places I go I'm not supposed to. Well, that that just happened when we went to Northbridge. I knew that we were probably going to get the boot at some point, and it didn't really take long. It was about a half hour, and they were they were on to us. 
Mm-hmm. And I saw him walking towards us. I put everything in the bucket, you know, went out and they're like, what are you doing? What, what are you looking for? And I'm like, anything. I'm not looking for anything in particular, just throwing the magnet in the water, you know, and seeing what happens. And he starts like rifling through my bucket. He's like, what do you got in there? I'm like, I don't have anything in there, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like he was really like searching me to find out if I had taken anything. Who was he? Was he a police officer or a guard or park, park ranger? Park ranger. I, yeah. I oh, thought okay. about going up there, so I'm glad you went first. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, yeah, the if a park park ranger wants if you're in a park and a park ranger wants to look in your bucket, they can look in your bucket, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think they can open anything that's closed or like or like search your person, but they can definitely look in your buckets. <laughs> yeah. No, it just seemed a little overly aggressive. He didn't even like say like, hey, yeah. could I look in the bucket? Because I wouldn't have given a care. I would have said, hey, go ahead. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can go search my car if you want. I, I don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. What kills don't me is like, that. you know, they're like, what, what's in your bucket? You know, or and it could be for anything, really. It's like, right. yeah, I'm at a historical spot, you know, like shot heard around the world, start of the Revolutionary War, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, maybe I pulled up a rifle, you know? Yeah. A, a, you know, Revolutionary War musket. Did you yeah. guys know it was there? Right. You know, like were you holding on to that? Like and that's and that's the problem is like when you when you pull that, now they want it. Yeah. Right. Right. And I would give it to them. I'd even say, you know what, give me a few weeks, I'll clean this up. I'll I'll find a musket stock and I'll give it right back yeah. to you. You can hang it in a wall. Like I'll tell you where I live. Where I live, I wouldn't be completely shocked to see an octagon barrel coming up from a, a very old, you know, Revolutionary Times uh, rifle or something. You know, you never know. Right. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, you can have that one. I'll three D print my own. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> dude. That's awesome, man. That's really awesome. That's I like, love that thing. Yeah, you Great gotta find that. that. You gotta find a clip. Oh yeah, the little. It's a safety switch. Yeah, you go right there. If I can find one that looks pretty similar, but what that a ring to... pulls out to, to arm it, yeah. Before you put it loaded into the bazooka. No, I, I, I actually I, got to fire. I actually got to fire at two different types of shoulder-fired anti-tank weapons when I was in the army, and uh, that stuff's pretty cool, man. I mean, boom! I'm what sure the force shot? like ripped you backwards, huh? What's that? The force like push you backwards. Those things got to be no, powerful. Uh, no, no, no. A rocket propelled grenade, a shoulder fired rocket, really doesn't have any recoil at all. The danger is you can't have anybody standing behind you and you can't be like in a small enclosed place because of the back blast. It's a gigantic ball of fire, you know. Right. Um, so, yeah, back, back blast area clear, you know, it, it, part, of the, part of the deal, you know. Hmm. So, in but they have like a little window recoil. Realistic. <laughs> So in Call of Duty, when I'm shooting the the bazooka out the window, that's not really realistic. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it that. kicks, yeah, it's not very realistic. Yeah. Come on. Now, um, yeah. Josh, what I was saying was um, that that piece that just looks like a clamp, bro. Yeah, I was thinking if I can find the right kind of clamp, I would three D yeah. print that little like mushroom top. Yes, go on I saw it. that. Yeah, I would just kind of glue it on there, but yeah, it's a side a side note. You know, if I could get it, that'd be great. But if hey, not, listen, like, you can always add good. it later, bro. Right, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. If I find one, I'll put it on there. But I'm not like desperately searching for it. Absolutely. Hey, Josh, is that a bazooka around? You just happy to see me? Oh, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So for that reason, <laughs> I'm out. Already got there. He is. He's coming back. I know he's coming back. There he is. Oh, Go. here I am. <laughs> so hey, guys, hey. it's about time for me to call it a night. Thank you, Nate, for having me up to uh, talk over everyone tonight. Buddy, I appreciate you uh, coming in, as always. Right, in buddy, totally. It's fun, been fun. Good night, buddy. Jeff Brockton and, and, and Josh, uh, I will be seeing you guys soon. I really want to do another adventure with you guys. Um, oh, before I go, I do want to mention quickly, 
My trolling motor is 100% fixed. My canoe is registered. As soon as we have some nice weather, I'm going to be out motoring around in my canoe, doing all types of magnet fishing, fishing, and everything. We're gonna, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to have some adventures when the weather gets nice. Cool. That is awesome. I can't wait for the weather to get nice. I want to do that, that cool. trash video. Cool. You know, the pickup trash video. I want to get that done. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing that's on my mind, and I want to do that with my son as well. So we'll see. Oh, now, cool. yeah, Wicked Digger, we're going to be out my canoe. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. It's a crazy person. On that note, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the weather gets nice, exactly, and I think it's crap for everybody. What's up, Ann? Hey, Chris. Appreciate you dropping by. Wicked Digger. How yeah, come, how been come been this isn't working? Is this working? Is yours working? Yeah, yours is crystal clear, dude. Oh my goodness. I can't even hear it. Hello? Hello? Copy it is definitely low. Okay, how is it now? Lower. <laughs> is it low? Yeah. Wait, hold on. Can you hear me now? Extremely. You sound like you're far away. Shut up. Oh, no. Bitch. Yeah, you're like a whisper. Are you freaking serious? Yeah. yeah, you're quiet. Hold on. You're lying to me, dude. Nope, not lying at all. All right, hold on. I'm going to unplug it and plug it. Got the pop, the whole pop. It says you're muted. You look this way. Hi. No. It says you're muted. Wait. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I got you clear now. Now it's better? No, no. you're still far away. What the crap? <laughs> I'm, I'm far away here. Yeah. yeah. How about right here? That's, That's louder. Right. That's louder. Yeah. That's good. Louder. Okay, hold on. How about now? That's pretty good. Sounds just like where Josh sounds like. Yep. So when I turn up the volume, that's when I lose you. That sucks. When you turn it up is when you lose it? Yeah, on the microphone there's a dial. Yeah. I don't I think that's a volume, isn't it? Yeah, it says volume. <laughs> it says volume for my uh for my headphones. That's weird. So well, you, you can, can hear, hear us me now. okay now though, right? Oh well, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, now. that's a decent volume. All right, cool. 999 with my twin face sticks. Throw that up there. Oh, excuse me. Throw what up there? Buddy's, uh, hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you're not subbed to Buddy, check him out. Yeah, if for yeah. some reason you haven't gone over to Buddy Biggs yet and subbed, not oh, only yeah. sub, but make sure you maybe watch a short, just say, hey, comment. No, All right, how about now? Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes. Yes. Okay. I figured it out. Just sorry. She, there, Thank she, you guys. She wants um, to sit down, but uh, there's a cat in her spot, and she's <laughs> fearful of the cat. Our cat. And you guys it. can hear me now. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, there we go. Buddy's taking off again. See you, buddy. Appreciate it. See you, brother. Oh yeah, he's got the one K. Yep. Oh, he's at he's at nine 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 now. Oh crap. I'm getting pretty pretty uh close to 500 almost. Nice, bro. I think uh, I'm trying to look right now. Yeah, 47 475. But I got to work on uh view time. You trying to still get in here or are you just saying hi? Getting, getting past that that 500 mark is is so hard. Like once you once you're past that 500 yeah. Yeah. Starts, I agree. I agree. Things, 500 things start to change you, get, a bit. you hang up at 500 this for last, a little while. This last 50 has been painstaking. Yeah. Um, what you it, should do is find some uh, military ordinance and yeah. get all over the news. That really, <laughs> I, I tried that. I was with you guys. <laughs> it does. It didn't work. That's funny. <laughs> I went up. Like 230 subscribers this month or just, last month. Just uh, from that? 
pretty much just from all the news coverage yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's a uh, that's about how much i went up like 220 230 and what what's Actually, great about it too is that they're all local people for the most part are they so oh, like cool. you know yep where i'm seeing these people and they're like oh i saw you on the news you yep. know i'm from i'm from needham or i'm from natick <sighs> like i saw you on the news like i checked out your right. channel that's, like, awesome. that's awesome i really want those local people you know and they can, yes dude we got out, we you know? just in brockton alone we got like a hundred and ten thousand people bro right think of it that way you know? you know the craziest thing in the world you guys know how small the cape is yeah um there's a guy in here that comes in he was in here earlier today his name is steven he's from yarmouth i don't know how he found me i mean i've <laughs> never i've never bumped into him out here or anything like that but i think it's awesome and i think it's cool it's like organic when you're doing it yeah. locally you know and talia's coming in to say hi hi talia hi <laughs> she's been sick and so she's yeah. drawing do you want to you show know, that's, your drawing oh, yeah. that's yeah. part of the reason i put 508 in my channel name is to right. show people you know where i'm from and if they're from the boston area they're gonna be like hey this guy's got 508 is he local check out my thing yep i'm local you know i'm yep. sure it's the same with Brockton yep. and putting you know cape cod in there too like it's to get those local people 100 percent but absolutely we're gonna put something up here talia is a really good artist she just finished drew, drawing something or is working on something so i'm gonna show it real quick um okay, let's put actually, it up yeah, but... or maybe she doesn't want it no, no no because when i show the drawing it's gonna like the camera's gonna flip so it's gonna show like the flipped version of the drawing and the flipped version will look a lot differently than the actual version so it's kind of like mm. so i gotta go oh, in here. you gotta got mirror it, it. Yeah, I can fix that. I'm going right here. Mirror my camera. Yep. So now okay. when I put it on there, it'll show up right. Won't it? Yeah, I think so. All right. So show it and I'll blow we'll it up. We'll see. We'll see. Show a little later. Yeah. There you go. Wait, actually, oh, no, wow. I just <laughs> the other way. Yeah, actually, oh. I just noticed that. What? Again, it was the wrong way. Was it? Uh, yeah. So we didn't want to mirror. Well, we don't we don't see any difference. You're the only one that sees yeah. the difference okay. when you do mirror. That's good. Wow. That's amazing. Really good. You, guys, you can't see the shading, but it's amazing. She, for you know, just turning, she's amazing with with her artist work, artistry work. Mm. I'm gonna get off solo here. Let me let me see that again, Talia. Oh, there we go. Put put it on solo. I'm going to. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 12. That is amazing. <laughs> it really is. It really is. My my kids, um, they draw very well too. And uh, my goodness, that that's awesome. Good for you. You can go places with that. Yeah, that's what I try to tell her. Really she, she used to do our uh, our thumbnails for a while. Nice. Yeah. Yep. I actually, you might that um, I have a a niece and they draw. They've been drawing since they were real young too, and she she started with the the anime stuff like you got there. Right. And uh, I, I suffered with that. It was it was really cringe because I would just <laughs> I would trace. It was like I was seven. Okay, I would trace them like the picture, and it just it looks terrible. I. Ugh. Yeah. And I find it once every so often in my drawers, and then I close my drawers and say, "I'm never looking at that ever again." Yeah, uh, it's a good. It's a good. Shows you where you've come from. Yeah, you know, exactly. You how much you've progressed. But I'm actually working with uh, my niece on a project for me. I don't know if you guys saw. I put out a post about what kind of tools and equipment you guys use for treasure hunting. Yes. And we're working. I'm working with that. Um, she's an artist. I am not. And she's going to be working on a really cool uh, T-shirt design. So, uh, awesome. and it, it's going to Absolutely. be and and spot on there. We're always our own worst critic. Yep. That's so awesome, she's Josh. she's starting that now, and uh, not sure when it'll be out. But as soon as I get it released, I'm going to get it out there, and you know, <laughs> see what get, her out, get her art out there a little bit, and right. 
I'm, yeah, I'm going to pay her for it. So my um my middle child, she likes drawing people. People, yeah. My that's the hardest thing to do. My oldest daughter. Uh, my middle child is like the graphic artist type person, right? right? And um, my my older daughter, she um, she draws like anime characters and stuff like that, cartoon characters and stuff like that. She wrote a book. She's actually um, in the middle of writing another book and wow. putting all the characters in there. She already wrote the whole book. She's an illustrator. Um, right. she, she's got bachelor's degree and everything. So, um, she wants to publish this book and be good to go. That's crazy. It, it's awesome. It's a beautiful thing, man. That was always one of my things that I've wanted to do. That's on my, uh, my bucket list is to publish mm -hmm. a book because I've yeah. actually, I've actually got a, got an interesting story. My life has been pretty interesting. So I want to mm -hmm. kind of do a memoir slash, you know, obviously I got to embellish it a little bit, but, uh, I got a lot, I got a lot of stories to tell and I think it would make an interesting book. That's awesome. Hey, you know, I of mean, course that, that would be, that'd be something that you want to do. You should do it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, kind of, kind of, whoa, was somebody dog. was shaking, huh? <laughs> and the dog, Josh. Nope. Had yep. a dog close by. Yep, that's the pity shake. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh, do you find yourself being an animal control guy, bringing animals home? Ow. Do you ever have to do that? You know, if if something doesn't pan out for that animal. I've only ever brought two chickens home. That's it, just chickens. Just chickens. I've fostered some dogs from our shelter. Right, but um. All of my animals have come from different rescues and organizations and stuff. So, gotcha. um, yeah. But. Um, my dad, he like a long time ago, he was like constructing a house and he found like raccoons. It was no mother, okay? It was just like baby raccoons. <clears throat> we had to take it into our house. I was like, don't touch the raccoons. You don't want to catch the disease. But it was, I think it was skunks. Skunks. Or raccoons he's our one okay. okay and then we had to take it to um i don't some place to like take care of them the vet really the weird. Vet, yeah we, <laughs> yeah the vet no it was like the what's it called the one, you know, oh animal shelter the, uh, oh the rescue league place where yeah. we got this guy. rehab oh. Oh. Animal rehab taking, like, oh. wild animals. okay yeah oh. yeah, yeah. I know it's, oh. right, it's right at the rotary. Yeah. The, the, the sanctuary. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it, it, we have one of those on cave. It's called like wild care or something like that. Oh, yep. Gotcha. And you can, you can bring them wild animals and stuff and they'll take care of them. But gotcha. my uncle had uh, raccoons when I was a kid. I must have been like probably about Talia's age, actually. And he had found them out in the woods without their mom. There were three of them. And he <laughs> raised them. Um. Wow. Totally shouldn't shouldn't have, but whatever he did. <laughs> um, and they actually were pretty cool creatures. They would wrestle on the ground with me. Um, they would love French fries. I mean, they, <laughs> they were awesome little animals, you know. Oh, wow. but, but eventually, once they got old enough, he did have to force them to go, you know. And they yeah. did mm -hmm. they did go, and they would come back every now and again just to check in. Um, oh wow! So it wasn't like they just totally disappeared. They stayed close. I'm trying to find my daughter on uh, Instagram so I show, so I can show you some of her uh, her artwork. Yeah. I know we don't have a lot of time, so if you want to talk about what's going on with you and all that stuff. No, we don't have a ton going on. I mean, I got, got my premiere tomorrow, which is going to be from that Northbridge thing. Um, I kind of it's very brief that we're in Northbridge because we got kicked out, but um, I have the little quick interaction with the people searching through my bucket and then we are gone. But that one, but that one was an awesome one because we found two weapons back to back, you know, and that doesn't usually. Oh, yeah. Happen. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think, but what I did this time too, some of my videos have been getting way too long. 
And I think people are just getting bored. I mean, it, 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 that Taunton one was 37 minutes. The mm -hmm. crazy thing is, is it was, there was no dead air the whole time. I was literally catching things after another, but 37 minutes is still a very long time. Yeah. Uh, when there's not that much editing, um, people tend to go away. Oh, no, there was um, tons of editing because I literally got two hours of straight catches one after the other. Every time I, I threw that in that Taunton River, there was mm -hmm. always a piece of metal on that magnet. Oh, wow. Uh, but I had to edit out a lot of the garbage ones because some were just some were just pieces of metal and it wasn't anything spectacular, you know? Like the editing, when you throw it, yeah. do you pull it back and bring it up right away? Or yeah. what do you do? For the most part. You yeah. edit into it. Yeah, I always you throw and drag, then drag. throw and then come back. And then sometimes if it's a crappy throw, I'll just do bring you know pulling it back in or whatever. But yeah, this one I think is going to be awesome, and the next one is 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 cool too. They're both under twenty minutes. Awesome. Yeah, and I think that's where I'm going to keep them from now on. I think anything over twenty twenty five minutes is just too much. <clears throat> Unless you like are telling a story or something, but this yeah. is fishing. There's not much of a story, you know. Yeah. I when I first started, I always tried to keep my videos pretty short. Right. Like around the 10 minute mark. Mm. Um I just felt like for me, that was my attention span on a video. Yeah. Like was, if I see a video and it's like 35, 40 minutes long, I'm probably not gonna watch it. Right. Like, honestly, and I, I have some longer videos, but I try to keep them completely engaging, you know, like yeah. right, 30 minutes and half of that is you throwing the magnet and not catching anything. You got to cut that, you know, yeah, get, break to the fines, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I like to start out, you know, 30 minutes or um, 10 minutes when I started out. And then once I started getting more followers and more comments and views, then I felt better about putting out like a, even like a 15 or like 17 minute video. You know, I just try to keep it pretty consistent with a couple mm -hmm. of things recently, you know, they're up to 20 minutes and stuff. And even There's more of a story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Like with the, you know, making 3d printing the rocket, like I cut a lot out of that. Right. And, you know, I tried to make a it video though, because it showed something completely different. You yeah, know what I mean? it 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 wasn't it didn't completely veer off from magnet fishing, you know it, it it stayed on topic, but it showed something different that you do. You know what I mean? And and, and I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, and I you know I am by no means an expert in three D printing, but I can get the job done. Right? And obviously, <laughs> dude, that that was amazing, Josh. Though I mean, so it's you did you know, a great it's job. another it's another hobby of mine, and I've been able to bring it in. Okay to you know this channel right you know in numerous ways you know i've got the 3d printed it's hidden by stream yard there but the 3d printed um armrest yeah. for my detector yeah. when that right. broke you know i've got in my shovel i've got this little magnet yep. so i can test rings and things like that and that's inserted in there on a 3d printed Insert. There you go, right there. Crazy. My my uh my middle child drawing. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Oh yeah, wow. And she she's got um let me see, hold on. Where oh, hold on. Yeah, there you go. There you go up. Yeah, she's extremely talented. Well, come on. I mean the green screen message. Yeah, I was gonna say green screen's message. Oh, no. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. She's extremely talented too. How old is she? Sixteen. Yeah. Wow. She's very good at like faces, eyeballs. You know. That's the um, hardest part is figuring out the proportions of faces. I could never do it. I mean, she. <laughs> she drew screen. me before. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Um. She'd probably kill me if I was showing it. <laughs> no, but I mean, hey, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's green screen's killing it because yeah, the green is butchering that sucks. Hold on, let me let me shut it down. Hold on, <laughs> uh, settings. 
Yeah, and then we got about a minute to go pop over to uh, Shane here. All right, hold on. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. Background. All right, so check it out. Oh, we got Bucky oh, dropping in here again. Look at that. There we go. Now it's better. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. That's and really she, cool. And she does, uh, like, that. look at that guy. What the freaking crap is going on? <laughs> the way the light is, it's just weird. I can't focus in on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. She's mad talented. Yeah, man. She's uh, she's really good. Well, it's um, not it's not that much of a... a, a, go, a right uh, Look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that looks like a card. I mean, they're... That's Mr. Beast, you know, Kyle. Oh he's yeah, in, he's hey, in the Ali middle. said that I, I recognize him. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Kyle. Kyle is in the middle. Could you tell it was him yeah, immediately? Yeah, I, I could tell. Yeah, so see, yeah. she knew. She knew before even uh, you told her. So it's nuts. I, I was when I was looking at the people, I could tell like who they were. Like some of them. That's really place. good too. Wow, look at that, Talia. That's great. Yeah. No, keep on doing it. You know, look at this. She's a she's a flutist. Yeah. Oh, I used I used to play the flute. But, oh uh, yeah. I kind of, like, I, I don't like it anymore. I don't actually play it anymore. Yep, now she plays the guitar. She rocks hard on the guitar. All right, oh, dude, wow. it's nine. Shane's starting his channel, there, his, uh, his little show. <laughs> Look at this one. Yeah, oh, come on. I see the fro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from uh, Steven Universe. Is it? I don't, I don't know. know. I think it is. I think it is. It's, uh, what's her name? Garnet, Gar but Garnet. no, Garnet is like. What about this one? I like Garnet. I know it's not. Oh, okay. That one's cool too. Yeah. I like the shine coming off the glasses. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Appreciate everybody dropping by. We will. Oh. Uh, that one's cool too. I like oh, that I one. Think it's hot. It's like I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, look cool. at that. This is uh, Conan O'Brien. Uh, not Conan O'Brien. Conan. Um, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name, dude? Hold on. I want to. Yeah, I don't know why it's getting on there. Yep, there it's going. I don't know. That's cool. Can't really see him. Face. Yeah. All right. Dudes, I really, really appreciate it. There, uh, Josh, just, Josh just threw it in the chat. Let's go uh, take our small little group here and go raid, Sean, go raid Shane. I yep. appreciate you all dropping by. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, we'll see you guys. Kind of pull off this here. Bye, guys. Solo. Adios, everybody. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. Have a good night, guys. You too, man. See you, Sean. See you, bud. Shut it down.